of the things that he is saying uh, is that the gifts that are in this house are going to be recognized greater than they've been even in the last five to seven years. Amen? Amen. And uh, we're going to see manifestations. Uh, we're going to see things happen. And we are called to be the church. Amen? Amen. Uh, this has never been about building one man. It's not been built uh, about building just one group. But that we are going to see, I believe, in the next uh, six months uh, to seven months, the rest of 2018, we are going to see more and more of the gifts that God has in this house on display. We saw it last week with uh, some amazing ladies in our church. Amen. Amen. We got... We got some teachers and preachers in the house, amen, and we're going to see more of that. We've got some new groups and life groups that are coming. We've got camps coming. We've got uh, VBS coming. Uh, God is doing more uh, significantly in this house than I've seen in years, and let me just, let me just give you a warning. The enemy tries to come to steal and kill and destroy. I've warned you about that. When you are on the way up, the enemy wants to come and bring you back down that ladder. Mark my word. I, listen, you got to recognize that is a, a tool of the enemy. I'm going to say something today or next Sunday, that's going to make you mad. And what you do with it will determine either you grow up or I say, well, are you planning on saying it? No, I'm just saying I know how the enemy works. Right? He's going to get you tired. There are people who didn't come today because they got up early yesterday to watch a royal wedding. And now they're just exhausted. Pastor, I got up to watch the wedding, and I'm just so tired. Two days later, I can't make it, you know? Okay, have at it, whatever you can do, right? It is time that we grow up. Amen? I'm just telling you. And you're going to get opportunity to recognize, and you're going to pay attention. God's doing something through prayer, through the prayer school. He's doing something through life group. He's doing something through the worship. He's doing something through the preaching, through small groups, through Thursday nights. I'm telling you, I'm telling you, you got to, you, you know, you got to believe. Sometimes I just got to say it this blunt that I don't just kind of like, you know, twiddle my thumbs all week and then try to figure out what I'm going to say five minutes before I get up here. That, that God's got a word in the house that he's given me. That that's why I'm, I've been preaching. Uh, I started, I didn't even intend this to be a series. That there's a love for the house. Yeah. Amen. That's what we've been talking about. There's a love for the house. Yeah. And what you do with this is vital at this season. Yeah. We're about to go into the summer months. And pastors, sometimes they get concerned about what they call summer slumps. Yeah. Right? We're not going to have a summer slump. Yeah. We're not going to have it. I bind all summer slumps. I take authority. You're going to come, and you're going to get involved, and you're going to be here, and you're not going to go to the lake, and you're not going to miss, and you're done being mediocre, and you're done sleeping in on Sunday mornings, and, and I know you're tired, but you go to work tired, you, you do other stuff tired, you go to ball games tired, you cheer for basketball tired, you, you do other stuff, but the enemy lies to you and said, you ought to just stay home, you're too tired, you know? Lie, lie, lie. Amen. Amen. Here's what I need today. Let me say this before I get to the end and I forget. I, I didn't say it during the offering. I meant to. We've got camps coming up this summer for our children and our youth. 
I've got four youth that want to go to camp that need to be sponsored. It's 200. Actually, we had five. Lisa and I already took one, so it's four now. $265 sponsorship. By the end of the service, I need four people to tell Krista uh, or Lauren that they'll take one of those spots and sponsor a kid, okay? Done. Amen? Amen. Done. Everybody say done. Amen. Amen. So that'll be taken care of uh, by the end uh, of today. Take your Bibles and go with me to the book of Matthew chapter 16. Matthew chapter 16. And I began speaking, as I said, on this topic, love for the house. Everybody say love for the house. house. I believe we're in a great season here at TWOC. So many things are happening. Uh, it, It is powerful. I've been doing this for 35 years in the ministry, and I'm here to tell you this word and what I sense, that I don't want you to miss it. It is possible that God could do a great thing and you could miss it. That's the truth. You say, oh, man, when revival hits, I'll be there. No, it's possible that God could do something great. Friday night, we learned, uh, he taught a little bit about in the book of Mark, where they said that, uh, that, God could do, that Jesus could do no mighty works in certain places because of their traditions. And that we have to change our thinking. And I'm telling you, it is possible. The scripture says that they, they played the music, but nobody danced. They piped and nobody showed up. They did it and nobody came. Nobody got excited. And I'm going to preach to you and I'm going to tell you the truth and I'm going to encourage you that you've got to fight the enemy over that stuff and you've got to to be diligent. Don't wait for me to motivate you. Just be disciplined. Discipline is greater than motivation. Everybody say, discipline is greater than motivation. Because sometimes you won't feel motivated to get up and go to the gym. But you're disciplined to do it. Can I get an amen? Amen. You're disciplined to do it. I want you to go to the next level. And and one of the great ways that you do that is you get connected to a strong house. There's a lot of houses out there, but you got to be connected to a strong house. Not a flaky, not fly by night, not what's the next greatest thing. You got to be connected to a strong house. The local church is vital in this hour. Amen. The local church is what got me to where I am. The local church, when I was a kid, got me in children's church, got me connected as a kid. That's why what we do with kids is important. When I went, I was in the local church. I got, I got connected. I started teaching at age 14 a bunch of children that we brought in from the neighborhood around the church. And I was teaching in that children's church. And, and they let me teach. I think it was once a month. They let me show up. I've told you this story with my little ventriloquist dummy. And, and, and they bought him. And his name was Dennis. And, and, and Steve was a ventriloquist back then. I know that sounds stupid, but every Sunday... Every Sunday that me and Dennis preached the gospel together, little kids would get up and walk down the aisle and give their heart to Jesus. Every Sunday. That's what I experienced at 15. Not because I was so good. I wasn't. I was doing stuff I shouldn't have been doing. But they still let me teach and still let me bring Dennis in there. And it was because of the local church believe. That's why we're doing camps. We're not doing camps because we got a bunch of adults who want to go spend two weeks of their summers with 16-year-olds. Can I get a witness? They're like, oh Jesus, thank God it's them and not me. I get it, but it is them. So let's support them and clap for them and say, yeah, go get them. Yeah, go do it. Amen. I can remember being at at summer camps. Anybody remember being at summer Christian camps? Right? There and having all the Kool-Aid wars and the and and, and we were I, I remember going to those camps and, and doing crazy stuff and being out in the lake and and sinking a boat out there one time because our boat had a hole in it and we sank and it sunk to the bottom and we just swam back in and went we're just not gonna tell anybody we sunk the boat out there, right? 
So, but I remember that time. I remember laying awake in my bunk at night talking to my bunk mates about what do you think about this Jesus thing? And man, why, you know, what could we do? What could we do as teenagers to help uh, do something for the gospel? And church makes a difference. Let's not take it lightly, amen? Let's have a love for the house. Let's have a love for the house. I told you last week, I told you last week, the church is what gives, or two weeks ago, the church is what gives us light, that we're to be a light to the world. We represent Jesus to the world. This is where we as a church uh, need to love how lives get changed and things get done, that we help the hurting, that whether it's through open table or another outreach or come on, bring your canned goods to feed kids that aren't going to get any lunches during the summer. Somebody get that in their heart and, and maybe you got some time during the week to say, hey, I'll come over on Mondays and pack up those bags and get them all ready for those families that are going to come and get those. I'm telling you, we get to be the light. We are the answer. The church, I believe, is the answer. The world's not. The church, the church has to be the answer. We got to go get someone. If you believe in the church, invite somebody. Get a neighbor to come with you. Invite somebody to come. And get them and hand them a card. Uh, the cashier, the, the neighbor beside you, the guy at work, somebody uh, that, that you know could use church. That You say, well, I can't really witness to them. That's okay. Just get them to church. We got to be the light. We got to be the light. Then we skipped some things last time, and, and I'm going to just talk about a couple other things today, and then, and then we'll be done, and we'll pick this up again next week, and we'll try to wrap it up next week. But the second reason why the church matters today is because the church is relational. We come here to church to connect with one another through lots of different means and groups. I told you about this a little bit two weeks ago. I'm going to mention some of it again. That we come, that we're relational, not just to those that are the same as us, but as the church, we're to reach out to those that aren't like us. Don't hang around everybody who talks like you. Don't hang around everybody who looks like you. Don't hang around everybody who's just the same. Let's be different, amen? amen. We need to be multi, we are multiracial. We need to be multi-generational. You got to be hanging out. You want to stay young? Hang out with younger people. Amen? amen. I, just, just get to know them. Look what God's doing generationally in this house. And be aware of it and recognize it and celebrate it. And, and, and know that it isn't... Uh, all about us and it's not all about what we do and how we do things and we've got to we've got to understand that that's vital to us the thing that i want you to understand about that whole relational thing is that when we begin to understand that we're a house of unity everybody say unity, unity. Psalm 133 says, Behold how good and how pleasant it is when the brethren dwell together in unity. That the house of God ought to be a place of unity. The world is a place of disunity. We got to be the place of unity. We got to be the house that we can disagree, but we're still family. Amen. We, we may disagree about some non-essential things, but we are still family in the house. What I taught on Thursday night a couple of weeks ago, talking about relationship, is that one of the main things that hurts relationships in the church, in the body, in marriages, in friendships, is the word selfishness. That selfishness is the root of many relationship problems. So if selfishness is the problem, then selflessness must become part of the answer. That we begin to recognize in a marriage that there are 
times that you've got to let the other person win. Amen? That you've got to be the one to say, okay, you, we learned that last Thursday night, some things just aren't worth the fight. Come on, can I get an amen? Come on, men. Don't act like you don't know what I'm talking about. Lisa wanted to remodel the bedroom. I didn't want to remodel the bedroom. So we compromised and remodeled the bedroom. Come on, how many men know what I'm talking about? Amen. Sometimes it's just easier to, to let it go. But you want, you, you got to break selfishness in your life. You got to say, particularly in the church, so many people, can I just say what I need to say, Pastor? Come on, Doctor. If I get in trouble, would you pick up the mic and just finish this message for me? Because I do have a tendency. Because too many people think they run the church. But I got news for you. The head of the church is Jesus. Amen. It ain't pastor. It, 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 it ain't you and it ain't me. Amen. But I'm telling you, you get in trouble when, when you start thinking it's all about you. You think it's all about you. It's not all about you and it's not all about me. Amen. I, I remember Pastor Russell from the great southeast here in town when he was pastoring there. And, and he and I knew we were acquaintances. We weren't buddies by any stretch. But I, walked, I was at a meeting he was at one day. And uh, I walked by and he said, Steve, how you doing? And all that. He just, they just moved into that, into that building and, and all of that. And uh, I said, oh, yeah, I'm do- doing well. I said, congratulations on the building. He said, come here, let me tell you something. A hundred million dollar building, and you can't keep them happy. <laughs> Woo! He told, he, he, I'm telling you, he, he told me one time, we were talking about worship, and he said, Steve, sometimes I wish the worship team would sing a song that I know and like. <laughs> now, y'all do, y'all, I love what we do. But that was his kind. He said, I don't know any of the songs we sing in this church. But he said, it's not about me. He said, I look at my congregation and they've got hands lifted and people are crying and people are being ministered to. And he ran the whole thing. But he knew it wasn't right to be selfish about it. We got to lay down. We got to lay down. Because here's, here's, what, here's what happens. When you become selfish in any relationship and you start thinking, wait a minute, this thing's about me, it is impossible then to honor somebody that you think is wrong in what they're asking for. And when you lose honor, you lose the bridge that gets you to the access. Of what you want in life. I want, I want a happy marriage, okay? But if I'm selfish and then I can't honor her because I think what you're wanting to do in the house, I think I'm this, and why do you want me that? And now I can't honor her, I lose the bridge to the access to have the kind of marriage that I want because you can't honor what you don't respect. Come on, come on. You, you, you're, you're, you're messing up. You got you to get this stuff right. Everybody, this is the problem in the world. It shouldn't be the problem in the church. The problem in Washington is everybody wants their way. Everybody wants their way. Because I know better and that other guy is stupid. And if he just would see it my way, then everything would be okay. It doesn't matter who the other guy is. It's the other guy. If you're on this side, it's that guy. If you're on this side, it's that guy. And what happens when we bring that back to a marriage relationship or a friendship or a church setting? we got to stop all that. The church is supposed to be relational. We're supposed to cheer on that prayer school. We're supposed to, we're supposed to love on one another. We're supposed to help one another. When somebody has a need, when there's something going on, whatever it is, that it's relational in the church. 
Which leads me, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to need an offering bucket in just a moment. Just one. It, it leads me to the last, I want to go to point five. I want to go back to the same thing. Now the next one, the very last one. There we go. Now, I'm sorry, six. Do I have maybe? Yeah, there we go. That's it. I forgot how many points I had. I, you see how much I don't get to today? You better come back next week. Or else, um, I don't know what's going to happen. Um, I thought I had a great point, and then I lost it. The, don't be selfish. That was my point. Come back next week. It's not all about you. Get back here. The church has to be on a mission, which our mission is to love Jesus. Our mission is to lift people. And our mission is to live with purpose. We've got, you've got to figure this out. You've got to take some time. You've got to get this. You've got to understand that we are called to love Jesus. Lift people. Why, why do we want to be relational? Why do we want to do these things? I didn't even really go over them again, but we have uh, all the things that are happening. Sunday mornings, it starts, we have service. The best service in Louisville, amen? amen. Tuesday nights, we got the living room. Amen. Wednesday nights, ladies' life group. Thursday nights, youth, uh, youth group. And, and Thursday night service called Encounter Worship. Where, man, this last Thursday night... We just went deeper in worship, and it was so good. I needed it, and, and, and people needed it, and, and I'm starting to see more people come. And, and uh, during the summer, we're going to do some things that are going to help you get to the other side in the areas of your health on Thursday nights. you got to get here. You gotta, how many of you believe you could be healthier? Yeah, okay, well, that's about 99% of the church. Well, we're going to help you do that on some Thursday nights during the summer. Uh, and the youth group is meeting, and, and the teachings are going on, and we've got... Uh, we had Friday night uh, with Gary uh, Kesey, and we got Open Table and River City Love Squad and VBS. You got to get your kids here. These are all things, man. Just come and, and be a part, and then serve in those places. Serve in those places to come and be a part of that. We got high school camps in Dallas. We got kid, uh, Camp Kid Jam for the elementary uh, down. I think it's at Western Kentucky University. We got a Kings Island trip and youth conference coming up in July, August. We got back to school prayer and worship stuff happening all the time it's not about us but the opportunity is being set why do i not want to be selfish why do i not want to be selfish i learned something a few weeks ago i learned something i, I kind of knew this but it, it just was reiterated to me John, would you come up here and help me real quick, please? A couple of weeks ago, we were in Chicago. Hold that for me, if you would. And uh, like any big city, they have a big homeless population. So does Louisville. But it just seems like it's more evident in some of those bigger cities. And we walked downtown and he, he, hear what I'm saying to you. There are some really, there, there's, some, there's some hurting people. And they just on every street, on every kind of corner, there's people with a bucket. And they're holding it out asking for something. And some of them look quite healthy and you wonder why they're there. But others are... Vietnam vets that have lost limbs, and there's others that are obviously in need. And you don't, I, I don't give to many of them, but every once in a while the Lord will say, that one, that one. I know somebody that carries ones and fives in their uh, glove box of their car that when they see somebody on the road, they don't give it all the time. But sometimes. And so, John, just stand there in the middle. We'd walk by, and every once in a while, the Lord would say, I didn't even bring my money clip with me. Just, he'd say, that one. 
And, and I'd say, okay, and I'd back up and I'd get some money and I'd, and I'd bless them and I'd do it. And I'd walk on and you walk by and then you think, why did I do that? Why am I helping that one? Well, the Lord told me, okay, that's a good reason. That's, that's good. But I gave to one. I said, Lord, why, what is it about that? What, why, why did I feel compelled? And he said, it's because you're glad that you're on this side of the bucket. He said, you're glad that you're walking down the street and not in the wheelchair. You're glad that you're walking down the street and you have the ability to be the giver and not the taker. I said, Lord, I'm glad. I'm glad I'm on this side. I'm glad I'm on this side of the bucket. Lord, I don't ever want to be selfish. I don't ever want to hold back and think it's all about me. I'm, I'm glad I'm the one that can go in the store and buy something. I'm, I, I'm, I'm glad I'm not the one asking for the leftover food from the restaurant. Lord, I'm not, I'm not dissing and Lord God, I have great empathy and sympathy. Church, we can't be selfish. We've got we, we've to be the church in this hour. We've got to be strong. We've got to have a bold word. We can't apologize for the things of God. We got to be stronger than we've ever been. We got to preach. We got to pray. We got to go serve. See, I want to go serve. I want to help somebody. This church, we're not meant to, to be a church that just survives. We're a church that thrives. We got to be relational. That's why we offer all these things. Because we're glad we're on this side. We're glad we're on this side. Doesn't make we're not any better than the one on the other side. We're not ever we're not any better. We're we're just we're just glad that God's blessed us so we can do something. This is going to be the summer where we're able to do more than we've ever been able to do. This is our hour. Amen. Let's stand up together. Jesus. Jesus, come on, lift, just lift your hands. Father, I'm asking you to pour your spirit out on Trinity like we have never seen. Father, let us sense an urgency in this hour. An urgency for our youth. An urgency for our young adults, our children. Father, even as we saw what happened in Texas this past week, God, give us an urgency to reach as many youth as we can. God, let us forsake all to go and reach them. Reach our young adults. Reach our young couples, those that, Father, are coming up after us. Lord Jesus, use Trinity like we've never seen before. Father, we lay down every root of selfishness. We lay down every root where we think this is all about us. Lord, it's not about us. Father, begin to show us. Father, that we're going, as your scripture says, to help the widows and the orphans, those that are without, Father, use us as a voice in the kingdom to help bring justice to those where justice has been denied. Use us, Lord, as a light 
where only darkness has been. Use us in the marketplace. Use us in the workplace. Use us in the grocery stores, in the corporate offices, in the doctor's offices. Use us, Lord God, to go to the highways and byways and compel them to come in. Father, we have a love for the house. That the church has to be a light in a dying world. And Lord, we've done that to whatever degree we have known, but Father, we're not satisfied. And I want to say to our, our church today that as your pastor, I'm not content. I'm grateful, but I'm not content. He's got more for us to do. And we're going to grow up and we're going to show up and we're going to get connected and we're going to be relational and I know it's inconvenient. The devil will always make sure that any church activity is inconvenient for you. I get it. I know it. It is for me too. But that you say, you know what? Here's what I believe as your pastor. I believe that your life and your family's life is better when the church is a major part of your family. I believe that with all of my heart. Is it inconvenient? Yes. Do you have to get them here? Yes. Do you have to show up? Yes. I get it. But we're done thinking that we're going to be okay without it. And there's a vast movement to get people out of churches today. Just do e-church. Just do this. Just do that. Problem is, I can't see you on e-church. I need you. I need to shake your hand. And I need to hug your neck. And I need you to tell me it's going to be okay. You can't do that on e-church. I need more than a text. I need more than an email. I, I, I need more than, than, than a Viber message. I, I need more than just you giving me a thumbs up emoji. My God, i got to preach this stronger. Can I just open the altar for a couple of minutes? I know we're running late. I get it. But for about three minutes, if you say, you know what, man, God's stirring something on the inside of me. I don't even know what it is. He is me. I don't even know what it all means. But I can feel an increased anointing coming. I can feel it in your family. I can feel it on your job. I can feel it in your finances. I sense that He told us to expand to the right and to the left to stretch out your tents and lengthen your cords. Strengthen your stakes. God's moving in your life right now. Trinity, are we ready to let Him? To let this be the greatest summer we've ever known? I'm just going to open the altar. If you want to come and kneel here or stand here for a second, a minute, And then we'll be done. If there's something in your life that goes, you know what, I just feel the need to go to an altar. I just need to pray. More get settled at an altar in one minute at an altar than in sometimes six weeks of you trying to figure it out. Fill us, Lord. Touch us. You guys just sing for a moment. Just just come. If you need to come, come. Lord, touch us in this house. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Lord. Touch us, Lord. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Something's happening. Something's happening. Thank you, Lord.
lift your hands all across this place. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Come on, Lord. We exalt you. We humble ourselves today. Say, Lord Jesus, have your way. during the day the Lord told me to share this with the Thursday night group and I want to say it to you as well to, dec to declare a set time over your life and, and what he meant by that was whatever you're working on in your life you're working on your marriage for the next maybe it's 7 days, 10 days, 30 days whatever that time frame fits for you go hard for that time period for 30 days I'm going to work on my marriage for 30 days I'm going to love on my wife for 10 days I will not say one critical word for 7 days I will tell my wife I love her 3 times a day for 7 days I'm going to commit make a commitment but set a time is what I heard the Lord say for 30 days eat right get healthy and then see where you are after 30 days the Hebrew children said for 10 days for 10 days we will not eat any of the king's food or drink the king's wine for 10 days what could God do in your life for 10 days? If you just said, you know what, I'm going to pray for 10 minutes a day for 10 days. What would happen if you would just go hard for 10 days? For 7 days till next Sunday. What could God do in this house if we said, God, we're going to do it for 7 days? I sense it, church. Am I by myself or is anybody else saying, you know what? Man, I can do this for seven days, for 10 days, for 30 days. Love my husband for 30 days. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bless him and I'm going to strengthen him and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give him uh, praise and encouragement. My church, I'm going to find somebody in the church to bless. You know what we've gotten away from church? We've, we've come expecting to be the blessee instead of the blesser. That's what I said. I'm glad I'm on this side of the bucket. I want to be the blesser. Lord Jesus, everybody just lift your hands one more time. Pray this after me. Say, Heavenly Father, I receive everything that you have said today. I'm grateful to be on this side of the bucket. I'm thankful, Lord for how good you've been. And I'm going to set a time, seven days, 10 days, 30 days. I'm gonna go hard for that time period. You're fixing some things in my heart, in my life. I'm laying down some things that have been messed up and you're fixing some things in my life today. I will never be the same. Never be the same. In Jesus' name, I give you all the praise. I love the house of God. I love the house of God. I give you all the praise, all the honor, all the glory. In Jesus' name, give the Lord a praise. Come on.